Alcohol affects the body in several ways. When it consumed, it travels through the bloodstream and reaches various organs, including the liver and brain. In the liver, alcohol is metabolized, but excessive consumption can lead to liver damage over time. In the brain, alcohol affects neurotransmitters, which can result in symptoms like impaired coordination, slurred speech, and altered judgment when someone is intoxicated. The symptoms of intoxication are caused by alcohol's impact on the central nervous system, disrupting normal brain function. As for a safe amount of alcohol, moderate drinking is generally considered safe for most adults. This typically means up to one drink per day for women and two drinks per day for men, though individual tolerance can vary. It's crucial to understand that excessive or binge drinking can have serious health consequences. But the big question is, should you stop drinking altogether? Stay tuned for the answer. Let's dive into how our bodies process alcohol. We typically consume ethyl alcohol, also known as ethanol. After we drink alcohol, it travels down the esophagus into the stomach. Some of it gets absorbed through the stomach lining into the bloodstream but only a small amount. The speed of alcohol absorption depends on what's in your stomach. If it's empty, alcohol enters the bloodstream faster. However, if there's a fat and protein in your stomach, absorption slows down. This also delays the movement of contents from the stomach to the small intestine where most of the alcohol is absorbed. Once in the bloodstream, alcohol heads straight to the liver. The liver plays a crucial role in detoxifying the body from alcohol. Understanding this process helps us grasp the potential risks of alcohol consumption. The blood vessels from the stomach and small intestine merge into the hepatic portal vein, directing everything to the liver for processing. As blood enters the liver, much of the alcohol it carries move into liver cells called hepatocytes for processing. The first conversion that occurs is alcohol turning into acetaldehyde which is more toxic than alcohol itself. This conversion is facilitated by an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase and coenzyme called NAD. The liver cells then convert acetaldehyde into acetate using another enzyme called aldehyde dehydrogenase and another NAD module. This conversion happens within the mitochondria of the liver cell. Acetate can be further processed for energy which is a better outcome than having toxic acetaldehyde accumulate in the liver. However, when someone consumes high levels of alcohol or drinks alcohol chronically, these conversion systems can be overwhelmed. This can lead to negative effects on the body due to toxic buildup of acetaldehyde or other byproducts. After alcohol is absorbed through the small intestine in a small amount through the stomach, not all of it immediately enters liver cells. Some unmetabolized alcohol circulates in the bloodstream and can be excreted through various means. About 5% of the alcohol can be excreted through the kidneys, sweat glands, and even the lungs, which is why you can smell alcohol on someone's breath and detect it with breathalyzer test. As alcohol circulates through the body, it can enter cells including neurons in the brain. When alcohol reaches the brain, it affects different areas that explain common alcohol-included effects. The prefrontal cortex, responsible for reasoning, judgment, and impulse control, gets suppressed by alcohol. This explains why people may act differently or make impulsive decisions when drinking. The hippocampus, involved in short-term memory formation, is also affected by alcohol, leading to memory issues and blackouts at higher alcohol levels. The cerebellum, responsible for coordination and balance, get impacted, causing stumbling and loss of coordination. Alcohol also affects hormone secretion, like antidiuretic hormone from the pituitary gland. This hormone normally tells your kidneys to hold onto water, but alcohol inhibits it, leading to increased urine output and potential dehydration. The last brain structure I want to mention is the medulla oblongata, part of your brain stem. It controls vital life functions like breathing, heart rate, and reflexes such as vomiting and gag reflexes, which prevents choking. Suppressing the medulla, which alcohol can do at higher levels of intake, is dangerous and can lead to fatal cases of alcohol overdose, also known as alcohol poisoning. Ingesting higher levels of alcohol can be extremely detrimental because it overwhelms in the body's ability to metabolize it effectively. The symptoms we've discussed earlier like impaired judgment and coordination worsen with increased intake and can become life-threatening in cases of overdose. Specifically, focusing on the liver, which plays a central role in alcohol metabolism, ingesting more alcohol means the liver cells have to work harder to process it all. 
However, there's a limit to how much alcohol the liver can handle efficiently. If we push beyond that limit, we can overwhelm the liver's metabolic pathways. One such pathway that kicks in at higher alcohol levels is the microsomal ethanol oxidizing system or MIOS or pathway which involves the cytochrome P450 enzyme. This pathway produces more acetaldehyde, a toxic substance. Additionally, it generates reactive oxygen species or ROS damaging cellular components like DNA. Another pathway involves organelles called peroxisomes using hydrogen peroxide and the catalyzed enzyme to convert alcohol into acetaldehyde. Both pathways contribute to the accumulation of acetaldehyde which is more toxic than alcohol itself. When the body can efficiently recycle NADH back to NAD or when the available adaldehyde dehydrogenase enzymes are maxed out, acetaldehyde builds up in the liver. This buildup damages liver cells, leading to conditions like cirrhosis and increasing the risk of liver cancer with consistent high alcohol intake. It's fascinating how genetics can influence alcohol metabolism. Some individuals have a genetic predisposition to produce less aldehyde dehydrogenase, leading to a higher accumulation of acetaldehyde even with lower alcohol consumption. This highlights the variability in how different people process alcohol. Now, let's discuss how much alcohol is safe to drink. While alcohol is toxic to the body, moderation can maximize its negative effects. The 2020-2025 Dietary Guidelines for Americans suggest no more than two drinks per day for males and one drink per day for non-pregnant females. However, some experts argue for even lower limits, recommending no more than two drinks per week for optimal health. Of course, abstaining from alcohol altogether eliminates the need for the body to metabolize it. It's important to note that the safe dose tends to be lower for females due to differences in body size and composition. Some individuals such as pregnant women, those with a history of alcohol use disorder, or certain liver and pancreas diseases should avoid alcohol entirely as even small amounts can pose risks to their health. The purpose of this video wasn't to judge anyone's alcohol habits, I wanted to share the anatomy to me and science behind alcohol's effects so this information can help you decide for yourself. I hope you find it informative. If you're interested in learning more about how substances affect our brain, check out our other videos in our channel. Thanks for watching and sharing your thoughts in the comments. Can't wait to hear from you again soon.